All right, and good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Digital. Today is July 25th, 2022. My name is Junior, and this is the one show where we keep you all well informed of what's going on in our digital world around us. Uh, today, we have a few things to talk about. Today is also Monday, so we have the word of the week, um, or yeah, word of the week here today. Uh, the first thing we have to talk about here is a company called Product Hunt and how you can uh, essentially launch your products on there or invest into other products. Uh, another one is going to be about a company called LimeWire, who is not new to the music scene at all um, or the streaming side of things, let's just say, um, for music, movies, videos and stuff like that. Uh, and then the last one here would be all about a conference that may be coming to a city near you. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for sticking with me here today. Um, the first item on the block is Product Hunt. What exactly is Product Hunt and how do you use it? Um, Product Hunt is essentially, and I'm gonna see if they give a really good, I, I read through this article earlier. Um, please don't play. Okay, just pause, there we go. Um, if you enjoy checking out the latest products, apps, and services online, chances are you've stumbled across Product Hunt, or at least heard of it, or maybe you wanted to or you wanted a place to find all new things, but you didn't know where to go. Well, Product Hunt, exactly that. The perfect all-in-one site to find the latest everything in tech. So here's everything you need to know about Product Hunt, how to use it, and who is it for. Um, so first up, I will say that from my opinion with Product Hunt, um, when I think of a product, I think of something physical you can hold in your hand. So if you guys are looking for actual physical product, I myself have not really found much of those. Um, lots of apps, lots of services and stuff like that. Um, but like product products, <laughs> I haven't found yet myself. Uh, there are a couple on there, but if you're looking for, again, it all depends on what you're looking for. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, different products that you can actually hold in your hand and use and, you know, their tech products, stuff like that. Product Hunt may not be the go-to place for you, but Product Hunt is a big company and they have lots of people that launch products on there. Uh, and that does not stop you from having to launch your own product on there as well. Uh, that being said, it's an online community platform founded by Ryan Hoover in 2013. The site is where makers come to launch their products and where consumers come to find the latest and greatest in tech. According to Product Hunt, these site services, the site services the best new products every day and well that is true uh, which again i agree it is there are a lot of good products on there i get the emails coming out like weekly of new products that actually just pop up on there and they're actually pretty useful again depend on what you want to do um let's see let's see let's see and i'm going to just jump right over to the actual website i just want to trying to see if anything else else pops up at me that i want to Oh, how to use it. Uh, the best part about Product Hunt is community element on the homepage. New products get ranked by their popularity. The popularity is determined by upvotes from from fellow community members. Don't know what just happened there. If you like a product, you can upvote as simple as that. Uh, the more upvotes a product has, the higher up on the homepage it sits. So it's not about who pays the highest, who, 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 who runs ads and stuff like that. It's all about the community of people saying, hey, this actually is a good product. I like it. I love it check this out and then it pushes it up the home page there um, um, yeah so it's kind of showed you how to use it how they good stuff yada 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 um, so if you want to launch a new product you can launch your own product you can search for a product product hunt is a one-stop shop for all new tech yada 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 uh, and so on and so forth. So I'll just jump right over here. So this is Product Hunt. This is their homepage. Uh, as you can see here, it has a bunch of uh, different businesses and stuff like that. Um, Meowie Monday, so that's today. Productivity, resources, 
form with Sheet, Hey Hey, Solana, Summer Camp, Online Hackathon, Recurring Payments, Decentro. Um, so all of these are just different, uh, what they call it, um, um, products, <laughs> I guess you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to click on this top one just because it has 206 volts. So maybe something's really good about it. A collection of productivity resources all in one place. Um, I could upvote it if I wanted to. I think I'm already logged in. Uh, discover the best productivity resources you'll ever need. Your bread and butter for productivity resources. Uh, this was launched in productivity tech for makers and tools. Um, So 280 productivity resources. Wow. And you know, a lot of these are actually like free guys. A lot of these are actually free. Um, sometimes there are some products on here that aren't free um, for a good reason, you know, but a lot of these, these are like startup companies that may have just launched. They're trying to build their name, try to build their brand, trying to build their company. Um, so they just go through product hunt and let the people, you know, you let the people uh, let know who they are and stuff like that. I'm just going to exit out of that. Um, so yeah, so here are a couple of uh, honorable mentions down here. Wushy, search the Mac OS UI and click the keyboard. Formula One Calendar, character.io. Um, generate a fresh set of characters or avatars with GAN. So I'm going to actually click on that one. Uh, platform where art meets artificial intelligence. Um, a it loads a new set of cartoon characters whenever the page is reloaded. If you don't like that set, just press space for a new one. The algorithm uses two neutral, two neural networks against each other. Um, so if you need like a new cartoon character for something, this can generate auto generate something for you. Um, yeah, so, I mean, again, it all depends on what you need, what you want to do. Um, speech to text API. Oh, wow. This has a thousand nine. What the other one have? It only had 207. So why is that featured higher than the other one? I don't know. This one has 1,990. Uh, oh, well, this is promoted. That's why. Um, uh, APIs to automatically transcribe. Um, this one's free notion invoice dashboard so, yeah, so this is this is product hunt. This, I just want to make sure you guys uh, knew about it or aware of it um, In case you ever have a need for it a hundred CSS buttons um, This if you're a web developer this right here will come in a whole lot of handy um, Yeah, that's nice uh, So you basically can code in CSS how you want to look without actually having to code it It's already like done for you kind of thing um, my abortion network. Interesting. Uh, so this would be one of those services that they're talking about services. Here's the promoted thing again. Um, turn your old pixelated photos into HD with just one tap. So refresh bot that's given, that's got 331. Um, that's an interesting concept. I wonder if you can do it the other way. I wonder if you can take a new photo that's like crisp and clean and then flip it the other way and make it, you know, pixelated. So it looks like an older photo or something like that. Um, here's another one that's been promoted. It was just 4,918 upvotes. So these ones that's been promoted, you know, they probably put some money behind it to, to pay for advertisements, but I mean, that's fine. As you can see here, the ones that are majority of them are making their way up the, the, the block is these ones here. Um, again, I would, you know, come in and upvote a few of them sometimes, uh, just to help boost them up a little bit here. Makers acquiring new superpowers to build and scale products and stuff like that. Um, so with that being said, I did come across a company, um, called Unisox that launched on product hunt. Uh, this one I came across actually a while ago. Let me see if it has a date on here. So this launch was like two years ago and this is called Unisox. And you'll see why here this is important because dynamically priced limited edition socks built on the Ethereum blockchain. Socks on a blockchain, guys. I mean, you count how how much more can we go with this? 
Unisocks are tokens that entitle you to one real pair of limited edition socks. Shipped anywhere in the world, each buy and sell will move the price. The increase or decrease follows a bonding curve. You can sell the token back at any time. Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, that's all I can I can really say about that. Uh, Unisocks, and I think if I'm not missing, yeah. So they have an actual ticker here. So dollar sign socks. Uh, so I think I should be able to actually like look and see what um, what their um, actual price is here. But I did find this article kind of explaining what they are, who they are, stuff like that. Um, so Uniswap announced Unisocks. So I believe they are created by Uniswap which is a decentralized um, uh, exchange, a limited edition pair of socks utilizing a bonding curve as a pricing mechanism the to facilitate ease of trading Uniswap created socks. An ERC-20 token representing a pair of Unisocks, users can freely trade socks on Uniswap or redeem them to receive their physical pair of socks. Um, Uniswap initially minted 500 socks so this would be in the form of like NFTs in this case. Um, this was March 2021 before NFTs were really booming. So I think that's why they're not calling it like an NFT. But essentially this would be in the form of like an NFT. Uh, if you own one of the NFTs, basically you can, because it's a token, right? If you own that token, you can essentially just trade it for the pair of socks or, um, or, what, or what have you. Um, since its inception, 185 socks have been burnt and taken out of circulation. Today, out of 315 socks still in circulation, only 14 remain in liquidity pool. Uh, Uniswap initially intended to burn the unsold socks after at least 100 days. However, they never went through with these plans. Um, so yeah, these are Unisocks. <laughs> uh, and again, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. I mean, I'm like, do they have the link for OpenSea? Let me see. I don't see the link for OpenSea. Um, so yeah, why do people even buy Unisocks? People ultimately choose to buy Unisocks for a variety of reasons. Why? While some people may still buy socks to redeem them for a physical pair, this is becoming less likely, especially in, as prices have skyrocketed over the past few months. Um, for price speculation and to bet on internet culture, that's why people buy them. Uh, the price of socks has risen from $55 to over $164 thousand dollars at the beginning of March since anyone can buy and sell socks from into the liquidity pool at any time the price will continue to move until uh, reaching equilibrium where supply is equal to the demand as the number of socks that remains decreases buying and selling even one token can dramatically impact prices uh, so actually I want to I want to look and see like what is the price of these today all right, guys. So I am right here on Coin Market Cap. If you haven't heard of Coin Market Cap, this is just a website, a very, very good website in which you can check the price on different cryptocurrencies and tokens and stuff. And right now, Unisocks, as you can see here, with the ticker Socks, are trading for thirty-two whole thousand dollars, one hundred and seventy-six, thirty-two one seventy-six point seven three. Wow, this is 21 ETH right now, and this is actually down. It's down 5% just about on the market. Um, and I mean, just, just look at this price, guys. So back in, uh, oh, wow, this is the one-day trend. Wow, what the heck just happened? <laughs> so just yesterday, it was priced at 35000 Right now, it just dropped to 32000 So let me check the seven-day. Let me check the one month. Okay, so wow. I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked here, but I'm just watching this market, <laughs> watching this crypto market as it tanks. So, so this is the one year, uh, one year mark here. At this peak, it was like 170 grand um, back in 2021, August of 2021. It was 170 thousand. And then these socks were actually just trading in volume in the hundreds pretty much the entire time until the market crash um, of this year, which is like April, May kind of time. 
Um, so now it's down. I mean, the lowest it hit was like 13K, which was uh, in June. June 15th was like 13K. So, I mean, these, you might, you guys might think this is funny. Like, who the heck would want to trade socks? Um, like, who in the world would want to actually trade socks and then, you know, get a pair of socks, whatever? Um, but that's the power of these NFTs, right? Uh, the power of these NFTs is that you can actually attach them to a physical item and then watch, you know, watch what the market does. Um, and this is just a, a, a true teller over here. All right. So the next thing that I have for you guys is the word of the week. And the word of the week is governance. Governance is basically when it deals with smart contracts and so governance is actually not a new term or anything like that um, i just don't think a lot of people have heard of it until recent days when it comes to a lot of these smart contracts nfts uh DAOs, decentralized organizations web3 and stuff uh cryptocurrency you know um and the reason why i want to share with share with you guys what it is is because you may actually come across a time where you are a part of it and you have to actually you know Add some governance to your own organization. Um, so smart contracts and tokens distribute power amongst token holders. Key word being the power. This is what is called governance. Web3 makes governance possible because anyone holding a governance token will receive the right to vote on proposi propositions and to participate in decisions regarding protocols. Uh, most governance protocols are organized in the form of a DAO the general concept of such an organization is to uh, allow a virtual entity that has a certain set of members or shareholders holders to have the right to spend the ent entity's funds and modify its codes. Uh, broadly speaking, DAOs or Web3 governance platforms are governance structures. They are structured like a private limited company or a co-op, but unlike these traditional structures, decisions are coordinated and enforced on a blockchain. Um, so again, if you don't know, or if you haven't heard of what governance is, um, it's essentially just voting power. Yes, that's the easiest way to put it. Uh, if you hold a, what they call governance token from a DAO or some sort of organization, you therefore have that voting power um, to vote on certain things that go on behind the scenes, essentially. So I would suggest, um, again, if you're looking to start a DAO, uh, I would suggest definitely look into who's going to um, or how your governance is going to work in that case. Um, or if you want to, you can join in on a couple of organizations and determine, hey, do I want to um, have a governance token um, so I can have that voting power as well. All right, so the next thing that we have here today is going to be LimeWire. So if you back in the early, early 2000s, if you were doing anything with music or movies or anything like that, you probably would have came across um, LimeWire at some point in time. Uh, LimeWire has been gone for a long time, but it looks like uh, Soldier Boy, uh, Mr. Superman himself, is starting to launch LimeWire. And if you guys don't know, LimeWire kind of like helped make Soulja Boy's career um, because a lot of his, you know, songs were actually downloaded for free <laughs> on LimeWire. Um, so right now what's, what's happening is that LimeWire is, uh, is coming back. And instead of coming back as a kind of like a pirating service where, you know, people can download stuff for free, is actually going to come back in a more legal terms, and I believe they're going to allow for, um, uh, what is it called, uh, NFTs and stuff like that to be able to be bought and sold on LimeWire. Uh, so LimeWire returns in full power with high profile NFT drops from the latest best selling artists. Don't miss out all the exclusive drops. Register now on LimeWire.com. Uh, let me see if I can. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that was me back in the day. All right, child. So I mean, this is this is real deal. This is not just a game that came out with a whole trailer and everything for it. Um, Lime Rider relaunches as an NFT marketplace. In the recent promotional video, fans felt nostalgic as Crank That by Soldier Boy was played by two Lime Wire users, flashing forward to same. The same users excitedly rushed upstairs to, yeah, we just saw that. As Afrotech previously reported, LimeWire is, is now a non-fungible token NFT marketplace reimagined by brothers Paul and Julian Zetemeyer with music, art, and other entertainment content at the center point. Um, uh, Soulja Boy's hit single was no coincidence on the rappers previously used um, to restart them. In an interview, he said down uh, he he downloaded the top twenty songs at all times Billboard charts. Um, yeah, so um, this is interesting. This is very 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 interesting how LimeWire is coming back full force uh, on the NFT front um, with Soldier Boy. And really turning into a, a full-on marketplace um, for I, I guess musicians and um, and stuff like that as well I'm not sure if they're gonna do artwork you know NFTs has been previously described as you know just a JPEG image and stuff like that but hey from what I saw on this little video here they are gonna do that um, so they just want to be a full-on NFT marketplace which um, which is going to be quite interesting. I myself am going to keep a very close eye on LimeWire. Um, I don't know if they're a publicly traded company, but they may end up being one or may have end up being uh, going through an IPO pretty soon or something like that. And again, there would be definitely one to keep in touch with. So the next one here that we have is Code Launch. Code Launch brings free software development Shark Tank style pitch competition to Columbus. Um, and I kind of ran into someone uh, at Black Tech Week last week who mentioned this and I was like, oh, well, that'd be pretty nice. Uh, so I did some little bit of research and I just wanted to share with you all because this is coming out in August, uh, like about 30 days from now. So if you haven't done so already, get your ticket to grab uh, or to make it out to one of these um, and, uh, and check it out. So what Code Launch is a tech startup accelerator that has launched revenue generating and VC raising companies. Um, it's a hackathon and pitch competition in its 10th year. It's uh, expanding into its third new market just over two years after IT consulting firm improving acquired its parent Last year, it added events in Houston and in Atlanta. Uh, so Cold Launch is no longer just in one city or state only. It is actually bringing itself into other cities. Uh, that's why I said maybe it might be coming to a city near you soon. Um, Houston, Atlanta, it seems like those are already done. Uh, I went to their website here. Um, the next event, again, is in uh, Ohio. In Columbus, Ohio, at the Davidson Theater on August 25th, 2022. Um, yeah, in 31 days, it looks like. And then in 51 days, it's coming to the uh, DFW area. Um, Cold Launch is a seed accelerated event that pairs early stage tech startups with professional software development teams. Uh, Cold Launch is perfect for the first time founders, both technical and non technical, after establishing a history of accelerating. Startups as an annual event in North Texas, Code Launch is now expanding to multiple events per year uh, beginning in 2021. Code Launch costs nothing for founders, no cost to apply, no equity surrendered. Code Launch is produced by improving and is driven by the principles of conscious capitalism. 
Um, so they've got Houston, Atlanta. This was 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017. Yeah, so it looks like they're just now recently starting to branch out in 2021 uh, and 2022. But it looks like they were in North Texas, it said, for quite a while. Um, they do have a video here of the previous one. I want to kind of just share that with you just quickly. Um, so, yeah. Welcome to the Code Launch ATL 2021 Professional Hackathon. Four startup founders, four dev shops, coding for 24 hours over two days. Let's thank our dev shop sponsors, Improving Atlanta, Build Technology Group, Improving Houston, and Code Authority. Now let's meet the startup founders. What we're building is a platform solution to help and support family caregivers that are caring for a loved one. So thinking about you or me, you know, caring for our parents. My name is Rashida Mahan, and I'm the founder and CEO of Green Chips. Green Chips help women gain the financial confidence and control needed in order to create the lives that they deserve. And an iStory is the first uh, tool for digital marketers that integrates voice AI, rich media, and analytics. It's easy, and it's quick, and it's cost-effective. We are the only creator first inventory-driven marketplace for content creators and influencers to sell sponsorships to brands and businesses and agencies. We're the only one of our kind where we allow creators to focus on what they create and do best and directly sell turnkey to the sponsors and the brands that want to work with them. It's good, my man really like it. Has been great, you know, the team at Atlanta. All right, so again, you guys can check out that full video there. No, nah, it's not too long, it's only like two minutes long. Um, but yeah, so that is what Code Launch is. Uh, looks like they do hackathons. Um, I'm assuming is this, I'm assuming this is gonna be also a hackathon, or is it just gonna be a because it didn't really say. I'm assuming it might be just a Shark Tank style pitch. This might not be an actual hackathon. It might just be a, um, yeah, may, in this case, it may just be the pitch portion of it, but it doesn't really, doesn't really state. So, um, but yeah, if you're in the Ohio region area, um, definitely do check out um, this cult launch event that's coming um, there. If not, then you're closer to the DFW uh, area here. Um, Um, okay, so August 1st, the application is open. So, hey, if you if you want to be a part of it and you want to apply, you can actually apply August 1st for that. Um, okay, so yeah, it still is going to be Hackathon Day 1, Hackathon Day 2, um, and then so on and so forth. So you have two days to, uh, to actually get with that there. Um pitch meetings and all that stuff. I mean, I, I would love to go to something like this. This is actually really cool. Um, but yeah, so that is all I have here for you guys today. Again, as always, appreciate your time. Thanks for um, joining me here on this episode. I hope you were able to find some insight on some of the different uh, aspects of this digital era that we are diving into. Um, if anything, just feel free to reach out to me. Uh, all of my information is in the description below and check out all of the links that I have provided for you as well to kind of do some further research into what we have talked about here today. Um, but without anything else, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. It's a great start to the week and I will see you all later.